Hello and welcome to Doc T's Math. In this video, we're going to look at some regression statistics and tables and data and graphs. I'm going to go to Stat, which is there above Program, below Delete, Stat, and the List Editor, Edit of the List. Generally speaking, the X values are in the first list, and then the Y values are the data. The measurements are in the second list. In this case, I got the X values in the second list, and I'll show a couple different examples here. Exit out, second mode, quit, and go back to stat. And we just want to calculate some one variable statistics. I go L2 because that was the data. Press enter, and we get quartiles, median, mode. Is there a mode? Where's the mode? I don't see a mode in there. N25, so that's 25 entries. The minimum is one, the maximum is the max axis 25, so 25 entries but it does not actually show a whole lot. Let's try same thing, number one, and I'm gonna say L2 comma L1. See how that changes? And again, that doesn't really do a whole lot for us. Let's try one more time. Back to one variable statistics, and let's try L1 comma L2, press enter, yeah, that's what we're looking for there. And so the frequency list is going to be your X, right, frequency meaning like uh, what order entry is it, and then in this case our variables that we're really interested in were the L1, and so our minimum is 1, our maximum was 5, uh, and the median was, of course, three halfway between one and five. So let's go to graph these, since some of these numbers aren't always so intuitive. Go second, y equals. And looking at the bar graph there, I've got our data is actually L1. Go to graph, and here we've got a nice histogram. So that, that's probably more intuitive to a lot of people. So we've got three or four, we've got four ones, uh, seven, seven twos, six threes, six fours, and two fives in that list. But go second, y equals, let's try to put that into a uh, box whiskers chart, box whiskers plot. And that's a little better, so press trace, and it's going to show our min, max, q1, and q3, which is pretty intuitive there. Our minimum was one, our maximum was five. And then right there in the middle is two is three, and then of course this is perfectly symmetrical. All right, so the second example, that was a fairly simple example. Let's go back and look at the list editor. Now this is the one I'm interested in. So we're going to start with one on the x. You can imagine an x y table here, and then as x increases, so does y increase, but not exactly. Uh, in step with x. So we've got a couple threes, a couple sixes, a couple sevens, a jump between 10 and 12, a jump between 12 and 14, between 15 and 19, and so on. It's not exactly linear, uh, but it looks like it's going to follow that trend. So let's exit out of there. And then again, go back to stat, calculate some two variable statistics this time variable statistics and what we're interested in is list two and list three. Second two, second three, press enter. And so here we are. Our mean was the mean was 13, standard deviation, two root 13, 25 entries, the minimum of one, the minimum maximum x was 25, of course, the minimum y2, the min maximum y is 28. That looks about right. And then we can go to second y equals, plot this, uh, do a scatter plot. Let's see what a scatter plot looks like. Graph that. And you can see here's our scatter plot. That looks roughly linear. Now let's compare this one to if we had made a scatter plot of the first group which was like that, and there's almost nothing going on here. There's, there's no general trend there. And so we can see then the difference when we try to make a regression. So we went to stat again over to the calc menu, 
number three, or on the calculator, I think it might be number four. L-I-N-R-E-G-A-X plus B. Now that's, that's actually M-X plus B, but same basic idea. So let's try, uh, we're going to put in L2 for the X and L1 for the Y in the first trial. Press Enter, and we can see almost no correlation down there. At the bottom, R squared is basically zero. And that matches their no general trend here. But when we type in the other one, let's go back to linear regression, and this time we're going to do L2 for the X, comma L3 for the Y. And we're going to get a strong correlation, and that matches, so the R squared there, 0.976, that's nearly perfectly correlated. And so our regression model here, the linear equation that best fits that uh, data plot is y equals 1.198x minus 1.22. Go back to the graph and so second y equals to scatter plot L2 and L3. Graph that. And on this version of the TI, I can just press right there, line of best fit. And indeed, you see that slope is 1.198 and y-intercept is negative 1.22. So that's the line of best fit matching the linear regression. So that's what linear regression is, line of best fit, depending on how you want to think about it. And then your linear regression data there, your operation will give you the R squared, which is an important value to notice the correlation coefficients. We have a very strong positive correlation between the x and the y. And that is observable in a scatter plot. Like here, it's almost exactly following a linear pattern. There's a little variance, but almost none. And it also is observable in the table, where we see as x grows, so does y. The difference between uh, the first x and the, the last x is 25. The difference between the first y and the last y is 26. And so we can intuit a lot of that same stuff uh, just by looking at the data. And so play around with this. You can see there's a whole bunch of different functions. But the main idea here is that we're looking at lines of best fit uh, and then how they associate to graphs, scatter plots, and linear regression. Okay, this has been Dr. T's Math. Thanks for watching.